viewers, and welcome to another GI Huddle with Stephen Crystal. Stephen, thanks very much for joining us. Good to be here with you, Tim. Yeah, founder of SCCG G Management. Um, obviously, we spoke at Ice London recently, and, and we spoke about kind of the industry at large. But today, very much, we want to focus on affiliates. Um, to to give you a nice sort of starter question, how would you kind of uh, describe overall the U.S. affiliate landscape right now? Look, we we come at it uh, at SCCG from two perspectives. One as the head of development and expansion here for Betfred, uh, we have a landscape, we have we view the landscape of rolling out uh, 11 state operations and relying on affiliates to generate traffic for those operations. And also as a, a company that advises um, affiliate companies like, for example, Media Troopers, who you'll be speaking to as well. So we, we kind of look at it from from uh, two different vantage points. Um, overall, uh, one would have to be optimistic with the scale and the size and the scope of the US iGaming and sports betting industry. However, on a micro basis, the, the companies are challenged from the standpoint of making a profitability. Mm -hmm. um, it's no longer an issue about gaining market share. It's, it's more can companies be profitable? And this is a struggle given the high cost of acquisition and the fact that uh, the quality of the acquisition isn't where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. There really is no brand loyalty. Yeah, And so obviously that trickles down to the affiliate companies who are finding it more challenging to get paid the premiums for the traffic that they can generate for the operators that continue to exist, notwithstanding an environment of uh, losses. Um, so that's the downside. On the upside, we, we are looking into the future and expecting many more markets to come online for not only sports betting, but also iGaming. It just hasn't materialized fast enough. Mm -hmm. In terms of the kind of source of, of, of traffic, how important is, is the, our affiliates right now? Because obviously you have social media, in the US, you maybe have a little bit more from kind of broadcasting perhaps than, than in the UK um, or, or elsewhere in Europe. Affiliates, how, how big of a, of a share of the pie are they getting at the moment? They were a bigger share of the pie when you had companies that didn't have a database like a Betfred mm -hmm. and were relying on affiliates to generate users. The companies that have been the leaders, if you look at Caesars, MGM, DraftKings and FanDuel, who combined control 85% plus of the market, they had built-in databases and weren't as reliant on affiliate traffic. So this is the challenge for affiliate companies. The issue for them is not generating traffic, it's generating quality traffic. Mm -hmm. And there are some affiliates that stand out in, our, in the industry that can do that. And the ones that cannot are going to find themselves in in having more of a challenge. Sure. Um, given everything that you've said so far, you mentioned at Ice London, it's the first of nine innings, you know, a US sports analogy. Um, on that basis, do, do you see a lot of things changing in the affiliate sector or maybe the, the changes, the challenges that you've already mentioned might, you know, keep things quite level for a while? I think I think you'll see M&A activity occur in affiliate sector, just like it's occurring in every other sector within iGaming and sports betting. So I think that will, will continue to be an issue. Um, I think affiliates that can focus on unique communities, on niche offerings, uh, uh, users that can bring special value. Um, I think one of the examples I would give is in the beginning, people were enamored with uh, on-site activations. Mm -hmm you know, at stadiums, arenas, et cetera, bars, restaurants. What they found over time was that the quality, the, the companies that were doing the acquiring were incentivized simply to get anyone to sign up, not necessarily a good user to sign up. Yeah. And what you've seen is the operators have taken back those functions because what they're interested in is building brand loyalty and not just acquisitions for the sake of acquisitions. And this is really the change in the in the tone and tenor of the effort for affiliates. 
Sure. I've got a final couple of questions for you. Um, I'll, I'll go to an M&A question because you, you, you touched on it there, and that's something I'll ask Ben later on as well. Um, how much more M&A could you sort of foresee in the affiliate uh, sector, maybe kind of in, in the coming sort of 12 months or so? Do you see a lot of activity? I see a lot of activity. There's not a lot of capital out there to be had. So if, if the affiliates like uh, like gambling.com or uh, Katana or Better Collective, if they have cash on hand, they, they can leverage that. I think you'll see a lot of combinations using equity that has less value now, but may have more value later. Mm -hmm. So I, I think there's, uh, there's certainly room to create efficiency by combining or by taking in uh, content that doesn't exist or doesn't exist in enough quantity. So there could be strategic reasons other than just efficiencies of the marketplace for M&A to occur. Mm -hmm. And my final question to you is, is from the operator point of view, as you mentioned, obviously representing uh, Betfred, um, from the operator side, what does a brand like Betfred look for in a, a, an affiliate, especially in the US market? Look, we have our share of affiliates. Um, we're having to build our database from scratch. We did choose to align ourselves with professional sports teams like the Denver Broncos and the Cincinnati Bengals and the Vegas Golden Knights. And those partnerships have yielded definitely some loyalty mm -hmm. to the brand by co by co branding. Um, I think for us, it's going to be a combination of sources of traffic in order to to gain customers. But the issue for us becomes how do we build true brand brand loyalty so that customers stay? At the end of the day, the platforms will look very similar. At the end mm -hmm. of the day, so it yeah. will come down to the basics of uh, customer service, uh, brand loyalty, the experience. Mm -hmm. And um, as the market evolves, I think there'll always be a role for affiliates. It will change over time, but I also think operators will become more self-sufficient over time as well. Mm -hmm. Well, Stephen, a pleasure as always to speak with you and thanks for your insight specifically in this into the affiliate sector. Thank you, Tim. And we're now joined by Benjamin Truman, uh, co-founder at Media Troopers. Uh, Benjamin, uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, and how are you today? I'm doing well. Doing well. Good, good. Um, excited to get your take kind of on all things affiliates. We just spoke to Stephen uh, Crystal, obviously kind of um, affiliate consultant, but also operator take. From the affiliate side, what's your take on, on kind of the US landscape overall at the moment? It's getting very difficult. You know, mm -hmm. obviously there's a lot of crackdowns on, regula on the regulation side. You know, operators aren't so willing to spend money. So if you're kind of new, um, you're facing a lot of challenges. You know, media mm -hmm. troopers is pretty well established after all these years. So we fare much better, but it's still difficult for us as well. But, you know, with everything changing, regulatory, you know, no more risk-free. Um, now we have states where it looks like they're going to start banning certain forms of advertisement. Mm -hmm. It's going to make it difficult. And yeah. it's definitely working at the moment. Yeah, I mean, the advertising topic, just something we were even talking about in, in our office. And I think Massachusetts has just gone live and we're seeing a bit of kickback on terms of sports being advertising there already. Um, but your answer was it was a kind of a good segue into my next question. How much room is there for for other players in the sector? You know, there's a there's a select few that are, that are quite established. You know, you mentioned yourselves. Obviously, there's Katina, Gamley.com group that Stephen mentioned. You know, how much room is there for newer players, perhaps other players? Listen, there's a lot of room for new players, but we also have to remember, and I always say this, it's a new market. Mm -hmm. So with new markets, we go through a lot of growing pains and and that's what's happening. You know, we're having a lot of growing pains. We're having a lot of this stuff and it's to be expected. But if you're, you know, you stay the course and you understand that this isn't going to be a quick turnaround, you know, you're not going to enter the U.S. and hit it big overnight, then you can do it. But you got to come in with a certain form of mentality. It's not... This isn't the mentality of, you know, Europe or Latam or mm -hmm. Asia. Um, things here take a lot of time in the U.S. Sure. To that end, long term, how does a brand like Media Troopers aim to, to stand out to kind of carve out that position over a longer run? And, you know, at risk of maybe giving advice to any competitors and an affiliate generally, how would they how should they go about this? Listen, it's all about personal relationships. You know, if if. If you have a good relationship with with an with an operator um, and the team at the operator, you, 
they're more likely to be nice to you. You know, this is very personable. So that's, you know, one of the things you have to be ready to do the groundwork to build the relationships that will, will help you succeed. If you think you're just going to shoot an email and, you know, or talk to an affiliate manager, that's not how it works here. A lot of times there is no affiliate manager. A lot of times, you know, there isn't many people in the marketing department. So you're looking, you know, you need to build these relationships. You need relationships, not just at the operators, but all around the industry. Um, because as we know, you know, being in this industry for so long, if you know enough people, it's it's always good for you. Mm -hmm. Sure. Uh, you mentioned earlier, you know, it's, it's US is, is not going to be like kind of LATAM and, and Asia. And on in some respects, it's quite obvious that difference. But have you got any more maybe concrete examples in the day to day affiliate process of of how, you know, those kind of regions are very different? Yeah. So in most of those regions, you know, you have um, companies that have been there for a long time. They have marketing departments, they have affiliate departments, they have BI departments, their tech is better. Um, so you can oftentimes just email out, you know, somebody at Betson and say, hey, I want to work in Latam or, and, and chances are they'll respond to you and, and do it. Yeah. Same case in the U.S. You know, mm -hmm. you send an email, you could send a LinkedIn, you could be introduced and still run into a brick wall. Mm -hmm. Okay, fair enough. Um, a final couple of questions for you. Uh, something I asked Stephen as well, in terms of M&A, I mean, plenty at the moment. Uh, obviously in the wider industry, but a lot more in, in affiliates specifically in recent years. Over the next sort of 12 months or so, uh, what, how much kind of activity in that area do you foresee? I don't foresee much. Okay. I don't think there's many, don't think there's many big deals to be had. Mm -hmm. uh, also, you're talking about a market that is not in the right place. So everybody's kind of looking for, for that, that special deal. You know, a year ago, it was different. It was more... You know, the seller had more leverage than the buyer. Today, the buyer has more leverage than the seller. So to see M&A in the next 12 months, well, let's see how the markets go. Mm -hmm. I think you'll continue to see it on the land-based. So you'll continue to see different people buy different properties on land. Yeah. Online, you might see some M&A, but, you know, who? Who can finance a deal for a couple billion dollars today? Um, you know, I, I don't know. Yeah, no, good question. Um, what I'd say is, uh, seeing as we've, we've talked a lot about challenges and, you know, a, a tough market for a final word, you know, is there a positive message you can sort of send out there to, to affiliates? And, and, you know, um, I guess, I guess it is, like you said earlier, there's a lot of challenges, a lot of barriers, but if you're prepared to do the right things and stay the course, I mean, there's definitely a market out there for you, isn't there? Yeah, it's, it's a brand new market. This is, this is very early on. Um, you haven't seen who's going to shake out to be number one yet. We're still 10 years away. Easy. Um, but if you stay the course, you can succeed. You just have to stay the course. And that's the hardest thing. Yeah. You know, as an affiliate, you're putting money out. And sometimes you don't see that money coming back right away. And it could get very difficult. I think that puts a lot of people off. Fair enough. Well, Benjamin, thanks very much for, for your time and your insights. And I'm sure we'll hear more from you on uh you know, as, as things unfold, plenty, like I say, plenty, plenty going on, plenty to watch out for. Thank you very much.